thank you to those of you who bought, bought a book, and thank you for sticking around for the second half. Read up. Uh, we're very excited about some, we've got some great poets coming up too, and uh, there are some announcements, but I'll hold off on those for just a little while. And the next poet is going to be John Stevens. Please say hello to John. Hello, thank you. Uh, there is a, one thing kind of unusual about Vancouver, and there's a number of people who know what the word EIS stands for. In, that's right. There's a big oil terminal that they wanted to build uh, in Vancouver, largest one on the West Coast, and um, they had an environmental impact statement where people can talk about what they think about the idea of having that here. First poem is called Soup. Should I pee in the soup? Would that be okay? <laughs> Columbia River. River of Life, Oregon, Washington, Idaho, and Canada, don't forget Canada. Beautiful river, river for salmon, from roaring sea to calm rebel spawning pits. A circle of life for preserving these noble fish. A river that defines our region. Rapids in this river are the name of a mighty mountain range. A river that has provided sustenance to Native Americans for all of their memory. A river that is used to transport grain to market and wind service to joy. Would it be okay for an XM Valdez dump of oil into this river? Would a train derailment send millions of gallons of oil into this river? Would it be okay to endanger this river with massive oil pollution? Would it be okay if I peed in your soup? <laughs> Um, in uh, Oregon, there's a town called Manzanita on the coast, and uh, there's a legend about there being uh, treasure that pirates have buried up in the mountains. Coastal Sentinel. Sentinel. Old man Neocani, gray wool cap pulled down around his ears, stares out to sea, memories churned. Rubs the stubble, greening in the spring on a craggy face. Mutters to himself, trying to remember. Where did I put that pot of gold? <laughs> and one is kind of pretty for these days. Three prophets walk into a polling place. <laughs> Jesus, Muhammad, Buddha. How did they register or vote? Needing to show a plastic laminated ID card to an old lady at table after waiting two hours? Could they have just said, Son of God, <laughs> Messenger for Allah, the enlightened one? Gotten quick confirmation, check next to their name. There in the booth, little striped shower curtain pulled tight, knowing the souls of candidates all. Do they forgive? and just pull her lower? <laughs> this last one's called Finesse Poetica. I used to write poetry before words were used up. Wow, what a shock that was. Like Pearl Harbor and 911 all rolled together. Who would imagine all the world's words in every combination had already been tried. There was mathematical proof, natural log of E going to infinity, really quite elegant. Now lawyers read to sue something already said. English professors jumping out of bell towers, poet laureates wearing electronic ankle shackles. Me, I used to write poetry. Now I write instructions for digital watches. Translated into 14 languages. Thank you, John. Next, we're going to hear from Rainy Knight. Rainy. Yeah. Rainy is co host at the Barnes and Noble reading at the end of the month. And the 
person that's going to be there, um, Cindy Williams Gutierrez, is going to be reading from The Small Claim of Bones, so I thought I would read a couple from that. And I think I read some here last month from this, and I hope I don't repeat. Okay, The Persistence of Scent. Mother, you will persist in fragrances, the next nectar scent of carrots, pineapple, pecans, baking in a two-layer cake. I will shorten my mornings into hours of praise. More than alchemy, fresh cilantro and pungent handfuls will be sautéed with garlic, onions, tomatoes, and, like magic, beans will turn into savories in my ordinary kitchen. And the aromas of lilies will not be resisted. I will plant tigers, stars, easters, cannas, callas. The rain on their talcum will conjure you, your skin, this scent, satiny scent. Here on the porch swing, just after a bath, I will sprinkle lily petals on my pond, dip my hand in this holy water, rub your silk into my fingers. But it is, it is the tang of the sea that will return your salt to soothe my wound. Here in this watery womb of the earth, this place you love only from a distance, since you never learned to swim. Here I will stop holding my breath, inhale the sting. Mm. Mm. And one more, tree lessons. When I was little, I belonged to the Hidden Treasure Club. Dues were a penny or a nickel. I find a penny in the park stuck in the Cedar Trail at the Nature Center. I read about, I, at the Nature Center, I read about false cedars. The gorgeous red cedar isn't a real cedar. True cedars have needles, not scales. My fingers graze a false one, to be sure. I consider the weight, something I had known for certain, has never been true. The Hidden Treasure Club was real. We had two members besides my little sister and me. My piano teacher's daughter and the girl next door. We called her Magpie because, boy, could she belt out a song. I don't hear any birds in the park. The four of us rode our bikes in the brush behind Stovall Road. The trees talked to me then. Faster, faster, go, go, go. I'd speed down the canopied embankment. I'd scream my secret will wildness. I heard a woman on the radio on Science Friday. She loves to roll over dead trees to show her children what's hidden beneath. Life, she laughs, it's just the beginning. See, look at all the creepy crawlers and the moss. I stand inside a skeleton of a tree and stroke its fur. I never had a tree house, but I used to climb the tree in my front yard. Every room was the sun room. The sun is sat saturating the tops of two crisscrossing trees. I pass through their arch and look back. The trees make a giant X. Slower, slower, stay. This could be the spot where I hear God again. Mm. March 29th, Tuesday, at 7 o'clock at Barnes & Noble on 4th Plain. <laughs> Thank you. Can you hold that book up, just so people can see that? Beautiful. If you missed Cindy's reading here, um, it's really not to be missed. I, I really encourage you. She's absolutely fantastic. So what is the uh, date of that you're reading? Seven o'clock at Barnes and Noble, yes. which is on Fourth Plain. Uh, what is that called? Van Plaza, Vancouver Plaza. Yeah, Vancouver Plaza. It's where the theater and Target and yep. are. Yes. So if you get a chance, she's just fabulous. Okay. So our next uh, reader tonight is Russ. Russ, come on up. So 
apologies ahead of time. I'm not going to be able to stay. I usually like to stick it out to the end. Um, it's been a busy couple of months. My brother and I learning to be caregivers, taking turns with my mom with her post-stroke care. And so now my household is blessed with more caregiver duties. Um, my significant other, you may know her as Julie, Mickey, she of many names, uh, is attempting to find homeostasis right now. What we thought was a flu out of control was her edema and cellulitis infection going systemic. So, uh, a warning to her, uh, I don't know. For all you poets, you have no excuses now. Obamacare, it's the law, you gotta get insurance. So, the, the impulse to hold back because you know you don't have the money for the care is not an excuse anymore for any of us. And so I think poets, part of our job is to celebrate life. So be alive. Uh, if you don't believe in allopathic medicine, well, that's okay too. Seek out the, the, you know, the holistic as best you can, but the allopaths are there and they know what they're doing. At least it looks like for the most part. So trust them for what, what they're good for for you. So whatever that is, stay alive, celebrate. So just the brief on with her. If you want to find the details, I left them with Chris. She would love to be here. Would love to see any of you that would love to see her, but not all, all of you at once. So he's got the phone number. You can reach her direct and call before you try to visit and the room number as well. And she's often a creative co-conspirator and a sounding board. And one of the forms that I enjoy very much to play with is fridge poetry magnets. And so I'm gonna share something that uh, with her feedback is complete and it's whole. I thought it was two different long fragments, but she thought it, I read them together and she thought it worked. And then I have some other fragments too. And I'll start with some of those. I've looked. Whisper, the only thing growing on light computer. Okay, another fragment. This is a fun one, I like this. Military service could have art horses dance while crossing the kitchen. Okay, so here's the amalgamation and then a few more fragments. And this does have, it's interesting how these things come together and and themes and texts and subtexts that you don't even realize when you're creating them. And she thought this had some heaviness, but it worked. Sorority sexual relations. Inhale cry in meme milk. Whis worshiping. Beauty lecture. Boil. Delay a giant sucking sound. By passing the buck. Blood red apparatus, best night never, didn't inhale love. From beneath life, bare breast language, incubates lifelong learn. Goddess dreams the river is stronger than your modern world. And a few more fragments. I was talking with David, if he's still here, Nelson. There he is, right in the front. And he just looks so humble in that cap. I couldn't find you there. Okay, about circular poetry. And it's a fun thing you can easily do with the maggots and arranging, and arranging them. This one hasn't built since I had that conversation with him. But I like it. Coffee with a peaceful welcome pizza. Or perhaps a peaceful welcome pizza coffee with, you know, that kind of idea. Every generation needs a kinder, gentler, naked potato friend. That made my, me smile. I like that. <laughs> and here's for the uh, inspiration for all of us. Simply, the importance of wow way. I like that. <laughs> So I want to apologize to Russ for missing him earlier on the list. So the reason that we use a list, hi, Brittany Baldwin's here. She's a great poet too and a great chef. Most of the people in this room can't, af can't afford her, but tell your rich friends about her. <laughs> and Brittany's been a, a feature in the series, so welcome. Come on, there's uh, seats up here if you want to come up and sit. 
No, it's so great to see an old friend to you. But yeah, so I was apologizing to Teresa for forgetting his name. And uh, yeah, I tell uh, people all the time that uh, I'm a writer because of my shitty memory, and this time I wrote it down and I forgot it, so I'm feeling a little bad. Uh, and next we are going to hear from the one, the only, Mike G. Woo! Brittany's here. All right. Oh, I'm pumped up. From Brittany. Hastily pasted, rambling, disconnected, inquit, imbecilic bullshit blues part 22. <laughs> Beside the tower of almighty silence with its copper jars filled with the cremated ash of forgotten organ mental patients, we kissed as if the remains of everything were not distorted by what's actually happening. The election looms like cancer, History metastasizes into a final third grade marketing ploy. Google is not a search engine, it's a guaranteed cum shot, and so on. <laughs> Lots of hungry poetic ghosts moaning about we wish would starve to death already. John Keats in dreamland with a Grecian urn and a dick that didn't work, ejaculating consumption's blood. There's Longfellow doing his level best mediocre assistant manager impression and never succeeding. The jingling vulgarities of Byron, Tennyson, Eliot, and the rest of the slop bucket idea phonies like faux sophisticate William Blake and his liar tiger burning broken metaphysics of failure. And I spy with my little poet's eye William Carlos Williams jacking off in his Patterson casket to images of white chickens doing unspeakable things to red wheelbarrows glazed in God knows what. Fame-hungry hacks disgust me. Chris Luna is the cure. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm grieving for a star man I never met, and Mike G had sex with the wrong redneck, the ten-year-old neighbor girl says. <laughs> if the moon goes, the night goes too, so I think I'll blow it up now. I'm so done with the cold light and the hauntings I can't run from. I'll write of a singular sun, an implacable eye. I'll stare, I'll make it blink. Most humans like the ocean. I think it's stupid like Hotel California droning on and on in a sick rhythm I wish would starve to death already. She often played doctor with her guns and her Bible. She tried selling me a light bulb on 82nd Avenue. Why is it that we are never allowed to relax into the miracle of each other? My friend Dennis McBride said that. Why did your brain frenzy into a narrative of hate and anguish two days after the same breakup? I said that. I've always had a crush on a little wicked witch who threatens to shrink me down to a little horrible gargoyle, lock me in a litter box that she never changes, and hang a sign above me head saying, you deserve this. She said that. I'd rather play on the jungle gyms of Narnia with the onion to the music we love than suffer sex with a gun to my head with no shared soundtrack. She goes on crawling over the end time glass that constituted her path, genitals howling goodbye to God and to what the children could have been had the light won out. I just want Hillary and Donnie, two monsters pretending to compete on opposing sides of the same phony coin, to fall in love and be taken away by the aliens so they can finally feel at home. I've seen dance moms boiling with the self-absorption, the likes of which you only see in war criminals or in self-referencing poets like myself. I've seen Portland drag clowns at the horror festival honk if you hump for Trump bumper stickers on I-5. It's been said that if you eat orange peel, you'll never get a headache. When the elephant is there grieving for her lover sinking in the quicksand, she, with the largest tear ducts in the universe, doesn't say, why didn't you love me more? Or are you breaking up with me again? With a winky face and a shot of bourbon, there's just the loved one becoming one with oblivion, with all its tenderness and hurt expanding into a vast absence, and the lover can't leave till the hunger retrieves him. There's the pharmaceutical eyeball rotation blues to consider, tongues gone all glossolalian and undone by all the wrong pills, evaporation of magic and the four horsemen galloping amok in the end time mind. Meanwhile, the fish I caught was so big, I had to hire primitive children to lug it across the jungle, but it got away anyway before I could take a photo. I'd rather be a tin man, an unfeeling magician of intellect, a cunning foe emotional simulator than suffer the erotic despair of the trapped man. Starve on, artist, the ten-year-old neighbor girl says. 
Behind the folly of all science and religion lies the simulation. I buy her 82nd Avenue light bulb. There's more to light than meets the eye. Call her Lucifer Redneck. I'm done with love in a robot world. If I told the robot what the kiss really meant, she'd cease to exist. Unlimited access to a robot redneck lover's body heals nothing. The old frustrated war is too deep and weighed down with grief to name still rage. And besides, her guardian angel drinks on the job. I want the atheist to be more skeptical. I want imagination to explore more than ruins. <laughs> Love is not passing around the baby dolphin till it dies from a contagion of people. Love is not grandma's ghost leaving messages in our own blood and setting off the smoke alarm. Love is not our future wrecked selves drooling outside of Bymart with next of kin photos of our parents who will clearly outlive us. Mike G had sex with the wrong redneck, the 10 year old neighbor girl says, yeah. But can't we celebrate the fact that the reptilians haven't won yet? Maybe the aliens can save us from Hillary and Donnie. Once again, the most popular girl at Comic-Con is dressed in nothing but band-aids and tape. I take her ticket, stamp her hand, then Batman's. I'm happy as a clam quivering on an electrified wire. The 82nd Avenue intellectuals convene in a tiny dark closet with room for two because there's only two of them. Many sperm banks and tombstones of truth inside her mind. Just try not to take the microchip when I'm gone, baby. Here, take these flowers with faces like fake CGI galaxies and I'll draw a little picture of your mouth on my hand. Chained to their comforts, the slave ignored the open door to Neverland. I'm going to Alaska, baby. I'm going to Alaska, baby. I probably won't go. The succubus waits inside, slowly eats my mind. I had sex with the wrong redneck. Once my body's done, shoot my brain waves into a vein of rock so my work can continue in a dark, ancient place safe from rednecks. Where's the Illuminati when I need it? Oh yeah, propping up the fake Hillary Donnie duality. Someday when we're down to the Morlocks and Ewoks and Daniel Van Winkle's husband Rip finally wakes up, we'll be off to tongue the wizard. My going to Alaska bag packed. I'm probably not going. I'm probably not going anywhere but into the silent rock. It's like what my friend Orphan Red said. What have you done that is so bad that you don't want to matter? Stepping through a mirror is a braver act than accidentally falling down a rabbit hole. I wonder who President Johnny Donny J.T. will nominate to replace Scalia, the 10-year-old neighbor girl says. Trumple Stiltskin, my friend Tommy G. says. <laughs> he really said that. Tommy G. Tommy Gaffney said that. <laughs> In the room's a little bird with romantic designs, big bright eyes, blue dress, and a red neck. Isn't she pretty? I wonder if I should dance with her. She probably ain't too good with words, but hey man, she don't look too crazy. <laughs> Cue to five minutes later, we are dancing. Tender little bird in my arms, everything I am, was, will be, I lean into your light. Oh my God, what a fucking mistake, the 10-year-old neighbor girl says. Thanks. <laughs> and to, <laughs> at some point in the evening, I have to uh, announce a few things, so I think this is a good, as good a time as any to give you give a chance for that to settle in. Thank you so much. What was I the cure for? Were you at Comic-Con? Uh, we were, were and you? I'm pissed off that we didn't I, see you. You didn't I see saw, her? I did. You, I she saw, saw the girls in the tape and band-aids. Yeah, we, yes. go, we go to these events, and they're costly events where it works, and usually the thing we're most excited about is seeing Mike G. Oh, no. <laughs> it was so Mike busy. G is here. He's it was so busy there. Yeah. It would have been really hard to no, run. Angelo and I have been doing Comic-Con every year for several years, and this year we convinced Tony to go. She's not really a comic book reader, but the thing is, you've got to experience it at least once in your life. So. Thank you, Tony, for doing that, and I think she had a good time. She had a pretty good time. The band-aids and the tape were the best. She was very popular. There is, yeah, it's also pretty, it's always pretty easy to figure out how to be the most popular girl in comic book. <laughs> and, you know, Wonder Woman is no slouch either, even when there's a thousand of her, but, yeah, they like her, too. Um, okay, so, a couple of announcements. Um, this Saturday, next door, at, at Niche, um, uh, once a month I, I teach a workshop. It's a $20 suggested donation, so that means if you're 
uh, able to do that, you can, and if not, please come and join us anyway. We're going to start a little bit earlier because it seems to give, we need some time to get coffee going. Leah makes coffee for those that want to purchase some coffee. And it's before the bar is open, so we suggest that people who are willing bring uh, a shareable snack and uh, bring a poem to share, because we always start every one of my workshops with uh, hearing a poem from each of you who might show up for it. And then um, on the 26th... Tell them what time it is. Oh, sorry, 11.30 to 2.30. So it was 12 to 2.30, now we're doing 11.30 to 2.30, so we have a 15-minute period where we can <coughs> get coffee and things like that. Um, and then on March 26th, I started a monthly um, uh, poetry and music jam, because poetry and music is my thing, and my friend Jim Templeton is here on the piano, so at the moment, the house band of two, me and Jim, uh, but we've already had great um, participation. Lori was there last time, Ian was there as well, and um, who, who else do we have who jumped up? There was at least, oh, John was there, John who read tonight, yeah. read, so, and if you have friends that are musicians, let them know, but do show them or let them know about how small that stage is, so we're basically mostly looking for um, people that are not bringing a lot of equipment but have acoustic instruments they can play on. Anyway, that's March 26th, and then the um, same evening, uh, my good friend Tyler Berba, Tiffany's brother, who's a guitarist and also uh, played piano last time he was here, is going to come and he'll he'll do poetry and music with me, but he's also going to, Tiffany will be a guest, uh, Karen Martyr, who is his girlfriend there in New York, will be a guest, and Bryce Schramm, um, his nephew, will also be there. So after the jam, uh, which is 3 to 5, at 5.30 we'll have this great performance with Tyler Berba, who I know going all the way back to the Kerouac School. Uh, I was there in 97 and 99 and we collaborated back then, before I even knew that Vancouver, Washington existed. Um, so that, that's what I have for some things coming up that I wanted to know about. Um, and now we will uh, return to the open mic uh, with the only person who can give Joseph Green's beer to run for its money, Bruce Hall. season. Is this... Can I look? Around us lately I've been thinking a lot of the old songs uh, from the 60s and this is one of my favorites. I don't think it was one of their huge hits but uh, it was still mine. John Key, uh, Steppenwolf wrote this, The Ostrich. We'll call you when you're six years old and send you to the factory to train your brain for 18 years with promise of security. But then you're free, and 40 years you'll waste to chase the dollar sign, so you may die in Florida at the pleasant age of 69. The water's getting hard to drink. We've mangled up the countryside. The air will choke you when you breathe. We're all committing suicide. But that's all right. It's progress, folk. Keep pushing till your body rots. We'll strip the earth of all its green and then divide it into parking lots. But there's nothing you and I can do. You and I are only two. What's right and wrong? It's hard to say. Forget about it for today. We'll stick our heads into the sand and just pretend that all is grand and then hope that everything turns out okay. You're free to speak your mind, my friend, as long as you agree with me. Don't criticize the fatherland or those who shape your destiny, because if you do, you'll lose your job, your mind, and all the friends you knew. We'll send out all our boys in blue. We'll find a way to silence you. But there's nothing you and I can do you and I are only two. What's right and wrong, it's hard to say. Forget about it for today. We'll stick our heads into the sand, just pretend that all is grand, and then hope that everything turns out okay. Yeah. I wrote a poem with some lines from uh, Chicago by uh, Graham Nash, and I couldn't remember who wrote it, and, Nobody in the class had heard of it, it was bad. <laughs> uh, I'm a big blues fan, and Karen Lovely, uh, one of my favorite artists, 
new album, 10 Miles of Bad Road, I definitely suggest it. Anyway, she posted a picture on Facebook, and it got me, so I had to write this. Prison work van, old prison work van, you try my soul, I love you so, I wait, pace, 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 for your return. You said we have a date. You said you would take me from these walls, from the constant roar of screams, from the thud, thud, whimper, the baseline of prison bad dreams. Don't say a word, because the jackboot goon has his baton ready. Watch your back. Prison work van, old prison work van. You cooed we had a date. You crowned that you would take me to the open road and we'd be gone. Carbon monoxide for my lungs. A serenade, that freeway song. Sharp stick to garbage. Orange coat for my back. Chains clink. The 12 gauge shotgun racks. Shell in. Ready. Here at once. It'll always stop you in your tracks. The jack boot goon blows a few holes in a can. An iceberg laugh. Positive reinforcement. Forget that freedom dash. Prison work van, old prison work van, you try my soul. You cruel bitch, you drop me back here. You are the abusive lover, I cannot let you go. I hate you, I hate you, I hate you but I will die without you. Tomorrow, I wait. Pace, pace, pace for your return. I love you so. Thanks, Bruce. And uh, next we're going to hear from someone who's been blowing my mind almost since the beginning of the Ghost Town Poetry Adventure, Mr. David Nelson. Um, so Joseph Green read a couple of uh, poems about Crows. Did I get that right, Joseph Green? Yeah. yeah. Um, crows are pretty weird. They're, they're kind of like an alien race that lives with us on our planet. And they go, you know, they caught you in the summertime because they're afraid that you're trying to steal their babies or something. Um, I dwell in possum burrows a fairer house with crows. <laughs> okay, all right, sorry. <laughs> Everyone's so quiet. Um, this is called uh, Evening Gray. A half hour of pieces and nothings together, just a space being bound into little sections while my hair hangs simply. Ever seen me before? Waltzing out your pink dreams, lining out your bold lines, I'm figuring you out, all wrong and with detail. You'll never know me not with such fine, big research, with such careless belief as the names I've taken, walking amongst ourselves, swiftly eating up lips, or just talking like that. You've pointed me a way, so the dream never ends, except in smashing graphs and in video games. You'd have me sing for you, you'd have me carry you, like Jesus bears a plaque. I'm the footprints in sand, so what doesn't make me, doesn't take the lotion, but I still take the bus, and you still hardly sleep. Imagining glad tears, or silfing trillia. Even on your smartphone, a man's love contraction. I'll plow you with kisses. I'll improve your posture by rounding it all out. Secrets that lie in skirts, 
prefer for me purple, though I'll still wear gray too, all the way evening gray. We go to the moon's side and breathe as if singing, gently and obscurely, under the harp of space or the blessed xylophone, sign for thoughts so cold, acting as if people, not as us, more fairies, as we instantiate the way that fairies do, since fairies live in mounds, and all the sweet black grit, as if to lose patience, and then put on earbuds, as the screen shattering pulses and pulses, I love to hear you so far, because you can't whistle, and are forced to blow space, as you've never been there, and the way you do it, does itself so airy. Go, my love, come, my love, stay, my love, by the fire that we made with kindling, that you sparkle inside, since no music was planned, since I'm running on rain, and since now that I've stayed, we say that we're closed off. With our faces, we say, we've had to remake it so that we build all day, even while you wonder and you pray to me here, in my heart, your charcoal, in my heart, your pastries, on the balustrade hang by slender, real fingers, with faces saying, oh, and asking the world things. We ride the surface wheel and swim as if they smile. The carpets are rotting, no bowling before them, for all the cat's paw pads, for all the paw pads cells, for all the moony hams that trot and cry with sweat like butterfly daydreams and small soldiers of dusk and gaunt burrowing hair. Thank you. Thanks, David. And the only thing better than one David is two Davids in a row. So next we hear from David Benj. Is that how you say your last name? Perfect, thank you. All right, David Benj, say hello to you. This is about when I forgot I needed God <laughs> after my cancer treatments ended. Sometimes I don't need to breathe. It just seems like the air is everywhere. If I can hold my breath through moments like this, maybe I'll swoon in perpetual bliss. Often, I can't get to sleep. The past is rife with wounds and mild disease and other distant memories. Always, I keep the faith. It's the last refuge of a forgotten man. The basis of my belief is asking God to set me free while clinging to truth like an amputee. This is uh, sort of an experimental thing. I do music, I'm not going to sing for you tonight, but I did set this to music, um, but it's spoken, um, sort of just a series of vignettes of different people. It's called Fallen. I saw the girl through flat glasses. Her shape was apparent to no one, a highly pixelated downturn in efficiency. She gave me love. The nihilist spoke without conviction, swearing only on the good in goods. The world grows eager for more defectors. I will never give in. The maestro lived his tragic scores. You could hear it in his screams. He could not speak of major scales. It made me dance. On television, all the smiles are guns that charge bullets for every tear. 
There is no plot we can't forget, nor truth to be heard. He made varsity the year coach died. We had to forfeit every game. A somewhat pivotal turn of events. All hail victory. The ratio of bees to honey has never been accurately measured. A hotly molten slide towards chaos. I keep three hives. Her daily ritual consists of three parts, looking, longing, and love. Satisfaction routinely eludes her. She craves an affair. The slices of time devoted to regret tax the heart more than real loss. The rudiments of rhythm are mostly space. Everyone looks good in black. I pray nightly for the, for the war that will take all humans but me. <laughs> A highly anticipated upturn of fortune. Somebody drop the bomb! I think Charlie would have approved. <laughs> I was thinking <laughs> Charlie Manson was brought up more than once tonight. Once by name. Um, oh, this is great. So uh, please say hello one more time to uh, Bryce Schramm. So